Today I'm joined at Paris Talks here at UNESCO headquarters by Dr. Lassim Zerbo, who is uh, the, the head of the Preparatory Commission for the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization. And uh, uh, Dr. Zerbo, you've been here today giving a keynote speech, but before we get on to uh, the subjects that you addressed here at Paris Talks today, mm -hmm. uh, just tell us about your work. The work, the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization uh, and its preparatory commission, it's uh, an international organization that is set for uh, to prepare the technical and political means for the entry into force of the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. And how do we do that? Mm. Uh, we have to provide uh, technical means for compliance with the treaty. And the technical means are basically uh, international monitoring system, uh, that is composed of four technologies to make sure uh, we can do surveillance underwater, in the air, underground, in the search for nuclear weapon testing by country that are preparing to develop nuclear weapon. That's basically our job, making sure that nowhere on this planet people are doing explosive nuclear testing in the search to develop nuclear weapon or make them more powerful. And for the keynote that uh, you delivered here today, uh, what was the main point that you wanted to get across to participants at the Paris talks? The key point today that I wanted to make was we're talking about the sources of conflict, the future of humanity. And uh, I wanted to say that when we mention innovative solution, the solution are there already. The problem is are we lifting ourselves to our promises and responsibilities? That's my message today. And I think we're not. We're not because we have treaties that are there since the First World War, the League of Nations, the United Nations, the way it was set up. And let's not forget that the United Nations was set for, and the first resolution at the UN General Assembly was how to deal with the knowledge of nuclear energy of atomic energy. But that's what, 74 years ago. Hmm. But have we dealt with it in a way where we can make our planet more peaceful and more secure? Certainly not. Would I say the opposite uh, has happened? Uh, are you alarmed by the uh, INT, the, uh, the treaty, uh, the, the nuclear treaty that was uh, signed between uh, Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev uh, back in 1987, uh, that the US has now pulled out of that uh, treaty, that uh, non-proliferation treaty, and the Russians have now followed suit? Yeah, but US and Russia are the two countries that uh, possess 90% of the nuclear weapon of this planet. So bilateral agreements are great among the two, but multilateralism is better. If bilaterally they can pull apart, we need that sock, that root, that will keep them through multilateral agreement. And that's a nuclear non-proliferation treaty. So everyone has to lift himself up to the promises of its people, to the expectation of this international community and to the responsibility that each and every one in this planet has. The future of our ch children, the next generation, because one responsibility under UN Charter is to make sure we not only live in peace, but we prepare peace and a better world for the next and future generation. And indeed, multilateralism is a repeated theme that we're hearing throughout the day. It's a thread that is really coming out throughout the uh, conference here at Paris Talks uh, uh, this day. Um, but you, mentioning the work that uh, the Preparatory Commission for the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization actually carries out, it's, you really are looking into people that might be surreptitiously testing nuclear, um, be it nuclear sources and nuclear weapons, be it any nuclear technologies that might be. Um, let's have a look kind of to France's checkered history, if you will, of nuclear testing, uh, specifically in the South Pacific. Uh, um, France is still one of the most nuclear power reliant countries uh, in the world. How is your organization perceived here by the, uh, the authorities here in France? Great question. Uh, it's true. Uh, uh, France is uh, uh, among the nuclear weapon countries. Uh, but one thing that is uh, often forgotten uh, about France, France is the only nuclear weapon country to have given up irreversibly its nuclear weapon test site. France has basically made a choice 
to dismantle the nuclear weapon test site, to not do testing ever again in the search to make more powerful weapon. Uh, people will argue and then let, tell me, yeah, but they're doing computer simulation. But computer simulation, like any computer modeling, has its limitation. In the long run, your model will be obsolete and you will need experiment to feed them. And if you can't do testing, there's no experiment to feed your model, and then in the long run it becomes obsolete. So the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty is an important and key element in to stop not only horizontal proliferation, meaning getting more nuclear weapon countries, but also vertical to not allow those who have it to develop more nuclear weapons. And France has made the choice to stop its testing. France has signed the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty and ratified the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. France is about the champion of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. They're working through the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty to make disarmament a reality. I mean, one could argue that they're not going fast enough. But what is fast when we talk about nuclear weapon and nuclear weapon elimination? Well, you're mentioning treaties there. I take it you're disappointed uh, that the US has pulled out of the 2015 Iran nuclear treaty. Look, I'm disappointed when anyone find that uh, agreements uh, that were set for are no longer valid. An agreement is an agreement of a time. Nothing is perfect, but everything is perfectible. Mm. So how do we perfect agreement that are set for to find a better way to move forward? It's through trust building. How do we build trust? To build trust, we have to avoid many things that are making people uncomfortable. And what makes people uncomfortable today? If you and I agree that we're moving right, and all of a sudden I stop and then I say I'm going left, you will have doubt about what I'm doing. And then you will say, why is he moving left? If I'm moving left, there is a problem. What we have to do is to always find that middle. And that middle ground and the center, our center, it's multilateralism. It's mm -hmm. not about you and I, it's about you, myself, and the rest of the world. And that's all. But you and I have to, make, to do something to make a difference for our environment and contribute to making a difference for the rest of the world. And to finalize here on something a little bit more recent, if you will, eh, that has been hitting the news, um, the old nuclear rivals of India and Pakistan have uh, seen a, a, a big rise in tensions uh, after a, a, an attack uh, in uh, Kashmir uh, about a month ago. Um, these are still young nuclear powers, if you will, in the scheme of things, but uh, um, that would mean also that there would be um, need for both sides to continue nuclear testing. Have you heard anything coming out from either Pakistan or India about what is on their agenda for developing or further developing their new nuclear uh, arsenal? Look, the good news is that uh, we only have one country, but one too many, uh, that has done nuclear, or carried nuclear test explosion in this 21st century, and that's North Korea. Uh, and that's why it is important to deal with the denuclearization issue of the Korean Peninsula. By that finish. is more of an issue to you rather than India and Pakistan. No, I'm coming. Okay, exactly. But it is important hmm. to deal with this issue because India and Pakistan can argue that they haven't done testing since 1998. If they say this to you, what would you say? Prove it. No, prove it because they haven't. We are... You are the people who prove it. monitoring system mm. to know that they haven't carried any test explosion mm. since 1998. Mm. And we are the only institution through our international monitoring system to be able to say that it is only the DPRK that is carrying nuclear test explosion today. And, and that's key. It's key when you talk about India and Pakistan. They've done nuclear test explosion, but under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, they're not recognized as nuclear weapon countries. And you know that. There's mm. a reason for that. Because the NPT takes it that there are five nuclear weapon countries, and then from those five, we have to work through a process to stop the development of nuclear weapon and the proliferation, and then make sure that we engage in disarmament. Do you hold out any hope for the overtures that uh, the Trump administration has made to Kim Jong-un on denuclearizing North Korea? Look, we heard today that uh, uh, Chairman Kim is yet to make an announcement and the tendency that he may pull out of the whole uh, deal. Mm. But that raises one issue, bilateral agreement versus multilateral agreement. And I'm coming back to what I've said in the beginning. Bilateral agreement are great and fine, 
but they should find their roots in multilateral framework. And that's what the United Nations is. And that's why we have agreements set forth for the past 74 years, and that we have to work through and then make sure we finish what we started. Dr. Lassim Zerbo, the head of the Preparatory Commission for the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization and keynote speaker here at the Paris Talks at UNESCO today. Thank you very much for joining me this afternoon. Thank you for having me. Thank you.